Okay, so uh, welcome back from the lunch break from my side too. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Alexander Schuller. I'm with the product marketing department, in particular electrification with Audi AG, and there I work in the eTrend Solutions team. Today I want to talk with you on how to basically increase the charging convenience, so the usability for everyday use of the charging process in public. In particular, for us this means on how to increase uh, the charging convenience through plug and charge for our upcoming vehicle, the Audi e-tron. And this means that we want to implement automated authentication through plug and charge ISO 15118. At this moment, I also want to thank my colleague Michael Spen, who also um, provided me with, with information for this talk. And I also would urge you to ask us as a team if you have any questions later on from the talk. So. Um, Everything about here is, is on how to charge the car. So details in the public, in the private area, how to do smart charging. Um, the question is, basically, if you looked into the public domain, either in the city or maybe, um, for instance, in, uh, on the highway, um, basically, there's, there's a lot of things that you have to th think about. First of all, where is the charging station? Is it free? Is it operable? Can I find it easily? Um, that are all questions that are vital for consumers when they really want to go out and have a public charge and have the, let's say, uh, peace of mind that they can use public charging infrastructure that is out there. We want to simplify that. On the other hand, when you're on a long way haul, something our Audi e-tron can do, uh, you also have to think about increasing charging power up to a level where you don't have to stop too much or too long um, on the highway, something that our upcoming joint venture in Ionity will help us to uh, implement. So when you think about how to charge the car, you could think about something like that. Um, it's a little gag, maybe, something we did uh, recently here in Berlin uh, with the, in, the, in the Siemens uh, lab um, not too far from here. The, the point is it's not very safe. It's not very effective. So basically, charging would rather look like that. Okay, So you're out there on the street searching a charging post. This is a specific case of public charging, as you may notice. But in any case, you have to go there, plug in, authenticate in some way, or maybe even fill out several cards or apps in order to get the charge to charge your car. So the point is, you have usually a lot of these cards around. So the idea of plug and charge, as I already mentioned before in the panel, is to maybe get rid of most of those things and, and make it simpler for the user to charge his car. So Audi wants to actually uh, you know, make this uh, experience of electric mobility simpler by addressing some of the main current inhibitors that we have. So what are the in inhibitors? OK. The ones that, that you all know is, well, well, range was one of the main current inhibitors. This has significantly changed to companies like Tesla, but also something that our upcoming Audi e-tron will do is to have a sufficient everyday range of more than 400 kilometers. So basically, it's the first car in the premium C segment. It's not that cheap, but it's definitely worth the price for what it delivers. OK, so what about the charging infrastructure? Because people are not aware of it. They're afraid of you know, just stranding somewhere. The, the point here is basically how we want to address that is that we set up a charging service. So basically, the e-tron charging service, a EMP or MO service for all, all the e-tron customers that will uh, enable access to over uh, 65,000 charging points in Europe at the end of the year or market launch uh, for the vehicle. And this will also include the fast charging or high power charging network of Ionity. OK, in addition to that, the infrastructure, the access to infrastructure, we need more information uh, and transparency about the technology of the vehicle. So we call that eTron Solutions, a service ecosystem that is enabling a cost premium customer journeys for our eTron customers. OK, so for us, that means that convenient electric mobility is not only uh, something that comes from the vehicle, but it also needs an uh, integrated service ecosystem, so something that makes everyday use simpler. What is that? What could that be in particular? Well, when we start with having an interest in the vehicle, people Googled it or had a nice experience, went to the dealer, or are interested in general about Audi and this brand and what it's implementing, they can think about, OK, uh, is this car suitable for me? What can I do if I want to get this car? What do I need to have to take into account? Where can I park it? So basically, you can run a self-questionnaire and assess your situation where you can charge and uh, what this actually means for you. So you get recommendation on what you can do to also improve your situation, maybe if you don't have a dedicated parking lot, for instance. OK, after that, um, you can run 
a home check. So you call an electrician, you get it all from Audi more or less, um, for, or through certified partners to basically check whether your home wiring is doing fine or not with what you want to do with the vehicle. You can then also get the installation of appropriate hardware that Audi delivers in several versions, the basic and advanced one that also have some smart charging capability. And um, in countries where this is possible, because most of the markets in the world are still not liberalized energy markets, you can also get a recommendation or an actual green energy contract. So you basically can also do something uh, taking down CO2 footprint right there at the socket in your home. Um, the Audi app, as the next point in the ecosystem, is helping us and, uh, to make this vehicle you know, very connected and transparent to the, to the actual user and owner in that sense. Because connectedness is something that might be even more important for electric vehicles, because you really want to know, is the car charging? Was there an issue with charging, maybe? Do I have to go back and replug the car? Do I want to do some smart charging or have a profile behind the charging so that I can use a different price or use more photovoltaic or something like that? Then my Audi app will be like, something like your uh, yeah, companion to monitor all that. The e-turn trip planner is a part of an optimized navigation system in the vehicle that will allow you to basically get from A to B under consideration of weather, your personal, um, let's say, driving profile and habits after a while, and the actual traffic conditions as usual, so, and under consideration of charging times so that you get there the fastest way possible or the most uh, efficient way, whatever you choose to be. And to, to sum it up, the Eaton Charging Service will grant access to all the public charging infrastructure, as mentioned before. OK. So um, we're bundling all this in Eaton Solutions uh, in order to make electric mobility a seamless everyday usage uh, for the Audi Eaton customer. OK. So what is our vision of a premium charging process? Just move over here so it's easier for me also to, to maybe uh, look at this, at this video in particular. So. Um, this is how it could be, OK? This is a fast charger. This one is our prototype and, uh, and the plant in a way, but it's 150 kilowatt. You can just drive up there, push a button. It's automatic in that sense, opens. You just plug in. There's automated communication and authentication happening based on the e charging service contract. You get granted the, uh, that you can charge. Just walk away, enjoy your break. Car is charging. If something's wrong. You just check on the app or get notified. You come back, push your button. It's closing down, and you can just drive away. So this is just as simple, right? It's not very complicated, but today, unfortunately, it looks different. So this is why we really want to employ this technology to make it better. So what is plug and charge? For us, it's a convenient and hassle-free authentication method at the charge point. So um, it's automated authentication uh, uh, through the charging cable based on ISO 15118 at the charge point. So that's power line communication more or less based on uh, the basic communication that's happening anyway. The basis in order to use this technology, well, that's a valid charging contract with any EMP. In the first instance, this will be our Eaton charging service. So you basically have the contract in the car. This makes the charging contract a fully digital product. So no cards, no paper anymore. It's just working out. It's in the, con in the car. You can use it anytime you want to, and you get a bill at the end of the month with all full transparency. Depending on the CPO, you also get it pretty much instantly on your app or in the portal. You can also use plug and charge for other more in, uh, application cases in the private area. So for instance, to uh, secure wall boxes in condominiums or something like that, because you have the same authentication methods working there too. And as mentioned on the panel before, there are a lot of smart charging capabilities behind that are maybe even more important in the future when you have more electric vehicles on the street. So what do we need to make this running? Well, basically, in order to have the seamless and safe authentication uh, method running, which is an open ecosystem or open standard in that sense it is not proprietary as, as a system that um, other OEMs might use, um, this one is an open specification that is, has been standardized. Um, what has been standardized is pretty much um, the communication between the vehicle and the EV supply equipment, so the charging point. Um, everything else around there on how to handle contracts, certificates, and anything that comes with the validation of the charging contracts is part of the ecosystem, as we call it here, because it's not specified in the norm. So there are initiatives like the, from the VDE or uh, DKE uh, committees that are trying to put this together in Germany and trying to do also develop this to an uh, international standard, too, because we also need to, let's say, 
get aware that we need a standardized way on how to also deal with the certificates and the contracts, because it's a lot of, let's say, interesting details to these processes that are not part of the standard, but which will uh, give you an interesting time in implementing them. Okay, so what are the roles in this ecosystem? We have the charging point operators, very important uh, in that sense. We have the plug and charge ecosystem, so all the certificate handling and, uh, let's say, trust anchors. Uh, our colleagues from Hubject also have one of the first implementations of this ecosystem running, and uh, we did actually develop the, that with them together in, in some of the Ultra E projects and also build on their initial solution amongst others uh, with other partners for the actual implementation. So the other roles out there beside ours is the OEM to provide the initial vehicle certificate is the one of the mobility operator, which is actually making all this possible. To get a little more technical in that sense, so if I want to, want to uh, say so, um, what do you need to get this running? So basically, um, this is a, the general idea of this. We have a public key infrastructure where everyone is, has a central trust anchor and has certificates to prove that they're pretty much the person that they or the entity that they want to, uh, to be in that sense. So um, if you look at it, you basically start out with a vehicle certificate um, uh, that the OEM has to provide first in the vehicle, but also in the OEM IT backend. This then has to be provided to something called vehicle certificate pool, so a list of, well, let's say, um, vehicles that are capable to use this technology. Um, after that, if the user decides to get a charging contract, um, the mobility operator will get uh, that certificate, put it together with his contract certificate, and send it to the next entity of this ecosystem, the certificate provisioning service, which is, well, pretty much, um, let's say, certifying that you are the role that you are claiming to be, so giving a security aspect and making this, in that sense, safer than the current uh, or some of the RFID technology out there. It's then being then pushed on to the contract certificate pool, so um, basically uh, any CPO can then get a list of valid charging contracts out there for the initial usage. So this is pretty much also the case that I'm explaining here how you start this initially. There's a lot more to that, but uh, we don't have time for all this. Okay, so once a CPO is getting that contract, we can roll it out to his backend world. This is all processed and validated and then put, uh, transmitted to uh, the CPO infrastructure, where then there's two ways to get that initially into the car. You can either do it offline through the cable, uh, which is depicted here, or what we're doing is going back through the OMIT backend or remote communication with the vehicle to push it into the vehicle on the other side. After that, plug and charge can be, can be used more or less hassle-free at any charging station that's supporting this technology. So um, what are the main benefits that we see, we see here? Well, charging contracts are getting a completely digital product with this, and um, it's comfortable and easy to use. We're kind of minimizing fraud risk. If you think of that your RFID gets stolen, and you get you know, your bill irregular on irregular terms or don't really check on it regularly, then you might end up with a higher bill, maybe for the, from the consumer side. From the mobility operator side, you, it gives us the possibility to have different or more individualized contracts, so something like you know, energy packages or anything else you can think of. But the main reason is basically to get also rid of the card in that sense. So this is um, how we want to offer this premium charging experience for our customers, and we will start a little later than the actual vehicle is coming out from mid-2019. Uh, we'll also with them probably update capability of the vehicles before. Okay, so the e-tron charging service is our main access point, our, an EMP that is going to uh, provide access to our customers to 16 European countries. We mentioned 65,000 charging points as a, as a goal for end of this year including uh, Ionity char high power chargers, but also other high power charging CPOs that are out there uh, with international roaming through uh, the well-known platforms as Hubject, for instance. So we support three authentication methods, which are, well, unfortunately still the RFID card because 90% of the AC legacy infrastructure is still running on this, and remote authentication, and as mentioned, plug and charge. Ionity will be one of our main partners in, in this implementation. Um, because, I mean, they're rolling out new infrastructure, putting everything in place. Um, they're putting up infrastructure that's really making our vehicle uh, long-range capable and um, also build on the CCS2 standard. This is why, well, also because they're a joint venture of uh, 
the well-known OEMs, also uh, assembled here in the room, where, and they will set up the charging stations in a plug and charge compatible mode. So, okay, from public charging coming to the private domain, what we see is that you can also think about employing uh, this technology in, your pr in the private area. So this is also what the Audi e-tron will be capable on to, in order to use your private wall box or the equipment that Audi is delivering um, against misuse um, in a condominium setting, for instance. But it also can be um, sort of smart charging functions and the communication based on the standard um, is enabled for smart charging in the private uh, or semi-private environment in that sense. So you can increase photovoltaic self-utilization is one of the main cases you know well, or local load balancing, which might become an issue with, uh, let's say, more concentrated fleets. So what's up next with plug and charge? Well, um, there's a lot of activity cur currently going on because the second edition is being discussed. I would also urge you to ask my colleague Michael Spin on this if you want more details. Um, like what is important to develop in the future is not only to have only one contract in the car, but offer also the possibility to have several contracts in the car. So multi-contract ability. That's why we choose the, the picture of the multi-SIM here. So basically, there might be use cases where people want to optimize and don't have any, only one mobility operator where they're actually uh, working for or, or charging for in that sense. Um, additional. Uh, information at the charging points so or transparency, transparency about the charging cost at the particular instance when you're out there charging is something that is still kind of a problem when you drive up most of the charging points. So we don't want this information only in different apps or in, uh, let's say, in web front ends uh, dispersed somewhere. We want also this information to be up, day, up to date and consistent in the vehicle HMI. This takes a little more time because basically standardizing the communication there, thinking about the development cycles that you sometimes have, um, even though this is getting better, um, basically this information needs to be right where it belongs, at the point of usage, um, where the user is sitting and making a decision on where to drive for the next charge. So if you have any further support, in particular from, let's say, charging point operators are very welcome uh, to help us, Audi, to implement this because uh, we're one of the first companies, uh, maybe besides the prototype we've seen out there, that are really rolling this out for the user on the street. And we need critical mass beside um, only, in particular, a smart or fast charging network. And we urge you to help us to implement this for all electric mobilists in the future. So. What are the conclusions so far? Well, we want to make electric mobility convenient by not only thinking about a car, but also making users simpler, more transparent, and yeah, something that can just happen as you're already used to it from more seamless uh, devices like Apple iPhones or anything like that. Because we want to offer this service ecosystem to improve the customer experience. Plug and charge is one of the main building blocks for this because it's make, it making a straightforward and hassle-free procedure for charging, uh, in particular now with fast chargers at, as the first use case. And, well, the technical basis for plug and charge is really out there. We're implementing it right now. Colleagues here are doing it, you're doing it, but there's still a long way to go to make this a seamless and working system that has a good customer experience and is working for all of us. I want to thank you for your attention, and I appreciate it, and I'm also uh, yeah, looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.